Hey there and happy Sunday. Thank you for checking in with this video. I just wanted to share a little tip that I read today in a fabulous book that I'm reading, reading called The Happiness Equation. Um, super great book, so I do recommend you pick it up if you have the chance or if you're interested in learning a little bit more about um, how to be happier. <laughs> um, anyway, so today's tip, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how more does not always necessarily equal better, okay? And I'm gonna start off a little bit by talking about First, the two wars that we are fighting as human beings these days. And now, what the hell do I mean by wars? So there are two, like I said. So the first war is all in our heads, okay? So it has to do with a really old part of our brain, and it has to do with a new part of our brain. So there's an old part of our brain, and that's called the amygdala. Essentially, it's um, fight or flight response to whatever stresses are coming at us. Essentially, it's looking for problems all the time. And then there's the new part of our brain, and that's the prefrontal cortex. And that has to do with um, rational thought, complex thinking, thinking through before you act. Um, and essentially what this means, and it's, like, it's a constant war between these two. So we want to react right away, fight or flight, but then there's also this other side to us, this prefrontal cortex, which wants us to think before we act. So that's the fight between our inside our heads, right? And essentially what this means is we can't control our emotions, but we can control our reactions. So, so necessarily what that means is like our, our happiness is a choice. Like it's, it's based on how we react to things. Yes, part of it has to do with what happens to us, but more so it has to do with how we react to it because we cannot control the things that happen to us. We can only control how we react to them. Okay. The second um, war that we are fighting is cultural. And what I mean by cultural, I mean it's a fight from what we used to live and we used to be a culture of enough, but now we're a culture of more, a culture of just wanting more and more. It's been evolving for a hundred years um, and essentially it's like turning us into consumers, right? It's been, it's the consumerism, right? With produ production things and whatnot um, speeding up and the ease of distribution with all of that essentially we've created this society where there's never enough we're always wanting more and it's um <clears throat> no longer a sin to be envious it's something that's actually a staple in our community in our economy and that's not necessarily a great thing because it just like it leaves us feeling like there's always something missing right so that's why it's not always that's why more is not always better and I'm going to share a little bit, a little story about that's really going to hit home, I think. Um, and I just wanted to point out, like, it's, it's something right now, like, like consumerism, that, that mindset of envy and that mindset of more. And like, we can't really get away from it right now unless we like go and live in a cabin somewhere, which, which would be cool. But then again, we'd miss you. So don't do that. Um, but because we can't really get away from that, that, that culture, because literally everywhere we go, we are reminded like of something better. We're reminded of the next thing. Like we are, tr we're basically trained by advertisements and by marketing agencies. We're, we're, they've trained us to basically want more before we're done with what we have. And because of that, we need to be more conscious and more aware of this culture. We need to be more aware of, of how our amygdala has to, or how we have to be more aware of how our fight or flight response affects our happiness. Um, and so we just do that by remembering that more doesn't always equal better. And so I want to finish off. Oh, hey, Ashley. Hey, Shannon. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for all the love. Um, so I want to finish off by telling you a little story that really hit home for me to explain why more doesn't um, equal better. And so I'm actually going to read it directly from the book because I, I felt like it was such a fabulous story that I don't want to botch it by forgetting anything about it. Okay, so it's called The Classic Tale of a Mexican Fisherman. A boat is docked in a tiny fisherman's village. A tourist wearing expensive sunglasses and a fancy watch walks by and compliments a fisherman on the quality of his fish and asks how long it took him to catch them. Not very long, answers the fisherman. But then, why didn't you stay out and catch more? asks the tourist. The fisherman explains his small catch is enough to meet his needs and those of his family. The tourist then asks, but what do you do with the rest of your time? Then the fisherman says, I sleep late, fish a little, play with my children, take a siesta with my wife. In the evenings, I go into the village to see my friends, have a few drinks, play the guitar and sing a few songs. I have a full life. The tourist jumps in. I have an MBA and I can help you. You should start by fishing longer every day. You can then sell the extra fish you catch. With the extra money, you can buy a bigger boat. And after that, the fisherman asks, 
With the extra money the larger boat will bring, you can buy a second and third one and so on until you have an entire fleet of trawlers. Instead of selling your fish to a middleman, you can then negotiate directly with the processing plants, maybe even open your own plant. You can then leave this little village and move to New York City. From there you can direct your huge new enterprise. How long would that take? asks the fisherman. 20 or 25 years at most, replies the tourist. And after that? After that, well, my friend, that's when it gets really interesting, answers the tourist, laughing. When your business gets really big, you can sell your company stock to the public and make millions. Millions, really? And after all of that, asks the fisherman. And after all of that, you'll be able to retire, live in a tiny village near the coast, sleep late, play with your children, catch a few fish, take a siesta with your wife, and spend your evenings drinking and playing guitar with your friends. Okay? So this, to me, just basically showed, like, happiness is a choice. That fisherman knew what he had, and he was living the most, or taking the most from it, and living the happiest he could. He didn't need more, right? He knew that enough was enough. He knew when enough was enough. So I challenge you today to just ask yourself, do I have enough? Am I happy? Those are the two questions. And I challenge you to also think of, like, five things you're grateful for. Think of them really, really hard. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me, Shannon. Thank you for joining me, everyone. And have a super fantastic Sunday. All right, thanks. Bye.